founder, president, grand champion, and technically only participant of the Maropa Dumpling Fest, which happens in my kitchen. Every time I lose control, I eat every dumpling in my fridge. I am so glad that the Macintosh Memorial Library has invited me here today to make dumplings for all of you. Um, have you ever wanted to learn how to make dumplings that are authentic, real deal, just like you might find in the best restaurants of Hong Kong? Well, you're watching the wrong video because I don't know how to do any of that. I do it the lazy way, and I take shortcuts that would get me fired from any reputable dumpling house. And furthermore, I'm kind of out of practice at making dumplings, so it's a good thing that the library has invited me here to help warm up my dumpling muscles for Chinese New Year, because dumplings are such a traditional food at Chinese New Year, I know that I'm going to want to eat lots. So let's get started. For dumplings, we need two things, the wrapper and the filling, and the dipping sauce, three things. For dumplings, we need three things, the wrapper, the filling, and the dipping sauce, and maybe some tea to drink with it, four things. For dumplings, the first thing we need is the wrapper. To start with, two and a half cups of unsifted all-purpose flour. If you use sifted flour, it's going to be more like three cups. We're looking for about 12 or 13 ounces of flour. Now, you can substitute part or all of the flour as whole wheat flour, but you'll have to be a little more careful because the dumpling wrappers will tear more easily when you're trying to roll them out. So, you will add half a teaspoon of salt. This will add a little bit of flavor and also strengthen the gluten in the dough. And we will also add about a tablespoon of some kind of fat. Now, I think that lard or bacon grease gives the best flavor and handling properties of the dough. But you can use any kind of oil you like. Uh, chicken fat, vegetable oil, sesame oil is nice. Being a native of Wisconsin, I of course have used butter many times, and it's turned out fine. Various recipes will say different things about the water, but to make my life easy, I always use hot water because that swells the starches, and uh, it also improves the workability of the dough. So we have take a cup or so boiling water, just off the boil pan, and we'll pour that in. I'm going to start mixing it with a tool so that I don't burn my hand. And after a while, the, the flour and the bowl are going to absorb some of the heat from the water, and then I can get in with my hands and knead it properly. Okay, it's still a little bit warm, so when you're doing this at home, be careful. Or use slightly less hot water. Now, I was saying before that Chinese New Year is coming up. We are filming this in early January of 2022, so it is still the year of the ox. But in February, starting February 1st in fact, it will be the year of the tiger, year 4720 in the Chinese calendar. The date of Chinese New Year changes from year to year in our Gregorian calendar because Chinese New Year is based on lunar cycles, uh, kind of like Easter or Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, or Diwali, the Indian Festival of Lights. Next year, Chinese New Year is going to fall on January 22nd, and it's going to be the Year of the Rabbit. But most of you know something about Chinese New Year and the Chinese Zodiac animals from reading the placemats at Chinese restaurants. Now, these placemats have lots of information, like uh, they, they'll say that if you were born in the year 1980, then your animal is the monkey. Of course, that's only true if you were born before February 16th, or excuse me, if you were born after February 16th. 
if you were born before February 16, then you would be the year of the sheep. I was born during the year of the chicken. The placemat will all call it the year of the rooster, but everybody knows that chickens are much funnier. So that is my own choice to describe my year as the year of the chicken. All right, now we need to let the dough rest for at least 20 minutes. I'm going to cover it up so that it doesn't dry out. And now for the filling. There's no set rule for the kind of, uh, for what you put into the filling. Uh, you can use beef, chicken, turkey, shrimp, but pork is the most common. Uh, you can use vegetables or any mixture of those. Uh, this is the mixture that I like to use. Right, we'll start with ground pork. There's about a pound here. Try to get fairly fatty pork so that the dumplings are moist and tender because if the meat is too lean, it could get dry and tough. Next, Chinese cabbage. About four big leaves of this will yield about two cups of chopped Chinese cabbage. You could also use regular English cabbage, but I prefer the Chinese cabbage because of the softer texture and the milder flavor. Half of a medium onion will give us about half a cup of minced onion, finely chopped. And I've got a handful or so of mushrooms here because I happen to like mushrooms. These are plain button mushrooms, but try Chinese black mushrooms if you ever had them. You buy them dried and then you soak them overnight to rehydrate them. All right, we want to chop the vegetables quite finely, especially if you're using the English cabbage. Now, this part would be really boring, so I'm going to use my all-purpose instant food processor that I bought with me. Watch this. All right, so with the pound or so of brown pork, we have about two cups of finely chopped cabbage about a half cup of the finely chopped onion, and the half cup or so of the optional mushrooms. Let's add those in. And in addition, we have our other seasonings. We have about a tablespoon of minced garlic. It's about two teaspoons of minced or grated fresh ginger root, about half a teaspoon of ground white pepper, or use black pepper if that's what you have. There's one egg white. You can also use half an egg. A tablespoon of cornstarch. two tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of any kind of rice wine or dry sherry, and one teaspoon of sesame oil. If you don't have sesame oil, then vegetable oil works just fine. All right, so let's mix it together and we want it really well mixed, so the meat will almost be like a paste. Some recipes tell you to salt the cabbage and then let it sit for half an hour to draw out the liquid and then squeeze it dry. And some other recipes tell you that you should mix the pork and the seasonings first and get to the right consistency and then at the very last minute add the vegetables. The purpose of that is to keep the, the filling from getting soggy. I never bother with any of that. Uh, usually I don't let the filling sit around long enough to get soggy and if it does I will cheat and I'll throw in a little bit of cornstarch. For Chinese New Year, I will often make a double or a triple recipe because the Chinese New Year festival lasts for 
15 days, and that's a lot of opportunities to be dumped on us. And actually, the party starts on New Year's Eve, so that's 16 days of fun, with family reunions, big gatherings, and of course, lots and lots of good food. In China, the Chinese New Year holiday is the biggest holiday of the year, and it's also the biggest travel time of the year, because everybody wants to go home and visit their family. A couple of years ago, there was an estimate that there were about 3 billion trips taken during Chinese New Year. So, it's hard to imagine just how much of a disruption it has been the past two years when, on top of everything else, the Chinese New Year holiday had to be effectively canceled because of the COVID-19 uh, COVID pandemic. As we're filming this, parts of China are currently locked down, so we don't really know what's going to happen, but here's hoping for better days ahead. All right, it's all mixed. At this point, you could fry up a little meatball and Taste it if you see if you want any more salt or more soy sauce or more garlic or whatever. But I think this is pretty much how I'm going to like it. So, let's get rolling. Okay, I can tell the dough is much more elastic and easier to handle after resting. If it seems too soft and wet to work with, you can always knead in some more flour to stiffen it up and then let it rest again. Now, I don't want the dough to dry out, so I'm going to do only a part at a time and keep the rest covered up. So first, I will take the dough and I'll roll it out into a long snake. Okay, and then after we've done that, I will cut or break the snake into little chunks. And then each chunk will become the wrapping for one dumpling. Fun fact, the year of the snake will be in 2025. New Year's Day of that year will be January 29th. So if you are the year of the snake, get ready to party. So each chunk is going to be about between one and two teaspoons of dough. And it depends on how thick you like your dumplings. If you want a chewier, doughy dumpling, then you can start, you can cut them at two teaspoons. But if you want them thin and delicate, then of course, take it down to one teaspoon. If you are just learning, I'd say start with the thicker two teaspoons and then work your way down from there. Dust these with a little bit of flour to keep them from sticking together. And I'm going to take our trusty rolling pin. Mine is a dowel style rolling pin, but a regular baker's rolling pin would also work. Uh, I bet you could even use a lefso rolling pin. So I'm going to take a little piece of dough and flatten it down into a little disc. Now hold the disc kind of like this with one end off the board and the other resting on the table. We'll take the rolling pin, roll up about halfway and back, rotate the dough with the hand that's holding it, then roll up and back again, rotate, roll it up and back, and we'll keep doing this until we have a dough circle of about the size we want. Now, three inches or so is pretty standard. Okay. Let's try another one. Circle. Roll up and back. Back, roll and rotate, roll and rotate. Okay, and that's two. 
When you roll it this way, you end up with thinner edges and a thicker middle. And that's so that when you fold and pinch the ed edges together, then the seam does not get too thick. Now, if this seems like a lot of fuss for every single wrapper, I completely agree, which is why I basically never do this. I just take the dough, smash it down, and roll it pretty much the way that you would normally expect to roll something using a rolling pin. And if it turns out not round enough, then, you know, there. Now it's round enough. If this still seems like too much work, then there's an even easier way to get your dumpling skills. And that is to buy pre-made dumpling wrappers at the store. These will be called either gyoza wrappers or shumai wrappers, and you'll probably find them in the freezer section. Now, you can get these in La Crosse, but I was not able to find them in Varroa. So I cheated. I bought wonton wrappers from Quillens, and I took and I just cut out the corners to make them round. These are essentially little circles of egg pasta, and you can fold them pretty much the same way that you would fold the homemade wrappers. Now, even though these are a lot less work, I hardly ever buy these because I prefer the taste and the texture of the homemade wrappers. Now, I should roll out the rest of these so that we can get to filling them. Uh, to save time, I think I better use the all-purpose instant food processor. That should be enough for today. Now, let's shape the dumplings. Shaping the dumplings is not difficult, but it takes just a little practice. We'll take a little spoonful of the filling put it onto the dumpling wrapper, fold it over, and pitch it closed. And try to get most of the air out before you seal it. You need to wet the edge of the wrapper before you pinch it shut if there was a lot of flour left on the wrapper or if you were using the store-bought fillings. So give it a nice pinch. And bend it into a crescent on the table, and we're done. Let's do another one. All right, so, spoonful of filling, fold it over, and pinch it shut, get the air out, and seal it, and we're done. Before I said that dumplings are a traditional food to eat at Chinese New Year, and the reason for that is because they symbolize wealth and good fortune. Depending on who you ask, the shape of dumplings resembles either little bags of coins or miniature silver ingots that used to be used way back in the old days. Now, for Chinese New Year, you probably want something a little bit fancier and more festive than these dumplings. So, we're going to put some pleats into the dumplings. Let's make a few with pleats to make them all elegant and high class. So, we'll put the filling on the dumpling as usual, fold it over, we'll start at one end, pinch it shut, then move to a little bit to the side, fold it like that, pinch and pleat down, move over a little bit, make another fold just like the first one, pinch it down, and we will keep doing this all the way till we get to the other end. Okay. We'll push out the air and we'll go once more along the edge, give it a good pinch to seal it, and there we go. 
Let's do that one more time. Filling on the dumpling. One problem that we that often comes up is putting too much filling in. If you do that, just take a little out. We'll start at one end, pinch, a little pleat, pinch, and keep going all the way down until you get to the end, and then seal it shut. Some people find it easier to pleat from the middle of the dumpling. It starts out the same way as all of them. You put the filling on, you fold it over, but instead of pinching at the end, you pinch right in the middle. And then, Go to one side, put a little pleat in, pinch, do another one, do another one until you get to the end. And then we'll go to the other side and do the same thing but the mirror image. So we'll put the pleat in this direction, pinch it, do another one, one more, let's move one more. And there we go. Now you can look online to find all kinds of techniques for pleating and shaping dumplings, but honestly, I don't use any of them. I personally find it faster and easier to put the pleats in the wrapper before I add the filling. So let's try this. Put Pleat, 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 add some filling, fold it over, seal it, and we're done. Let's do another one. One, two, three. Fold it over. All right, and we're done. That one opened up. Now, when I use this technique, I will always do exactly three pleats on every dump layer. And the reason I do exactly three pleats is very important. It's because it's enough to make the dumplings look a little fancy, but not so many that it causes me a whole lot of extra work. I suppose that a better number of pleats to put in each dumpling would be eight, because eight is considered a very lucky number in Chinese cultures. And especially for Chinese New Year, because you want to start your New Year with a lot of good fortune and Lots of lucky numbers. Let's, let's try it. Let's try one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And a little filling. Pinch it shut, and that does look a little bit fancier. And if you want, you can go through all this trouble if you want to make a good impression. 18 is also considered a lucky number, but I don't think I can get 18 pleats along, what it, along the dumpling there. At least not with this shape. Let's try something else. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Turn it around to seal it. Okay. And there we have a dumpling. On the other hand, you would not want to make a dumpling with exactly four plates because four is considered a very unlucky number in China and other Asian countries. You know, in America, there are many buildings that do not have a 13th floor. Well, in some Asian countries, you will occasionally find a building that does not have a fourth floor or sometimes a 14th floor. During Chinese New Year, you might not want to even say the number four because that might chase away all of your good luck. Now, this is taking a long time, so I think I'm going to use the all-purpose instant food processor to dumple the rest of this film. Uh, naturally, you will all know that the verb to dumple means to wrap a filling inside of dough which is a perfectly cromulent word, which I did not just make up. So, let's do this. Okay, the dumplification process is complete. So now we need to either freeze the dumplings right away or cook them before the moisture in the filling starts to dissolve the skin and you have just an awful mess. To freeze the dumplings, you put them on a lightly greased baking sheet and stick them in the fridge or the freezer overnight and then transfer them into a baggie or other airtight container until you're ready to use them. For cooking dumplings, I know two ways to cook the dumplings. You can steam them, you can fry them, you can boil them. Three ways. I know three ways to cook the dumplings. Let's start with steaming. All right, here I have lined a steamer basket with cabbage leaves so that the dumplings will not stick to the steamer. I've arranged the dumplings in so that they're not touching and these will go over into the steamer. And these should take about 10 or 12 minutes to cook. If you're starting from frozen dumplings then you'll want to add maybe 5 minutes to that. For fried dumplings you want to preheat your frying pan, like this one is already preheated. We'll add some oil, and don't be stingy about it. And now, we will arrange the dumplings in the pan, again so that they're not touching each other. So after a while, these will start to turn golden brown on the bottom, and at that point we will add some liquid, either water or chicken broth or, or whatever you have lying around, and then the steam from that will cook the dumplings from the top. And you can put one more in right there. Okay. All right, well, while these are cooking, we have time to make a few dipping sauces. All right, dipping sauces. This one is always a hit. I'm going to take one thinly sliced scallion. Roll. And a generous, generous scoop of minced fresh ginger. We'll cover that up with soy sauce. Add a spoonful or two of sesame oil. And if you don't have sesame oil, you can try vegetable oil or peanut oil. I don't think olive oil would work very well in this. At the co-op, they sell a sunflower oil uh, from Dripless Organics that I think would be very good in this. So we'll stir this up. And we're done. By the time the dumplings are finished, the essence of the ginger will have absorbed into the soy sauce and it will be great.
another sauce that I often make is called Khoi Sin sauce. Uh, now you can find this in the Chinese food section of most grocery stores. I know you can find it at the co-op here in town or at uh, Sometimes you can find it where it's already ready to use, but this brand it comes as kind of a thick paste. So I'm going to take some of this concentrate and stir in enough water until it has kind of a slightly runny texture. Just a, a little bit thinner than ketchup, I would say. And while I'm stirring this, I will tell you that the third sauce that I typically serve is either hot chili oil or sriracha sauce straight from the jar. Okay. And that's our dipping sauces. All right, the dumplings in the pan are, oh look at that, they're getting a nice browning on the bottom. So it's time to add the liquid. Now for this, for this size pan, this many dumplings, I think I'm going to add about half a cup of water here. And we'll let that steam for about, it should probably take five or seven minutes. Um, probably an extra five minutes again if you start from frozen dumplings. Now, while it is cooking, you'll want to keep your ears open and listen to make sure that all the water doesn't boil away and they start to burn. And if they do, you can add a little bit more water. And contrary-wise, if there's still water left over at the end, we'll just lift up the lid and let the rest of it boil away. All right, you notice I didn't tell you about boiling dumplings, and that's because I only have the two burners, so I can only show you two of the three things I know how to do. But boiling is the easiest of them all. You heat the water up to just under the boil, you put the dumplings in the water, you wait until they float to the surface, and then you cook them for five more minutes. Now, the reason that you want to have them just under the bowl rather than vigorously boiling is that the action of the moving water from boiling, that can cause the dumplings to break apart. So that's why you don't fully boil the water. Now, let's take a peek. Okay, the dumplings look about done. There's a little bit of liquid left in there, so we'll just let that cook off. And the steamed dumplings. Okay, those also look done and ready to go. Now, when in doubt, if you're not sure if they're cooked or not, you can always just take one, cut it open, look inside, and see if it's ready. Now, these steamed dumplings should be ready to go. However, the fried dumplings will need a little bit of persuasion to come out of the pan. There is a reason that they are called pot stickers. Now, fortunately, the all-purpose instant food processor is up to the task. All right, the dumplings are ready. They look fantastic. I can't wait to try them. Let's see, get a little sauce. And we'll try a dumpling. shove it into your mouth. Hmm. Well, that's good though. Well, I've gotten really hungry making all this dumplings for you. So, I'm going to stop and see if I can break the world record for the Baroque Dumpling Fest of dumplings eaten in one sitting in a library. But I hope that you've had a good time learning about dumplings. You can find out more about Dumplings, dipping sauces, Chinese New Year online, or at the library. We've got a selection of books that you can check out, and there's even more available to talk to your local librarian. So, thank you to the Baroque Macintosh Memorial Library for inviting me here to make dumplings for you all. 
and especially thank you for being part of the Viroco Libraries programs. So take care and happy new year. Oh, almost forgot my cake. <laughs>